Hello and welcome back to How About That Crypto, your home for regular crypto and Web3 news and updates with your host, Bitcoin Stylist. Today's news and updates are more bullish than Monday's episode. Starbucks goes crypto and Web3 with NFTs and loyalty rewards. Bank of America reports the ETH merge is bullish for institutions. JP Morgan and other financial institutions are going crypto. And Bitcoin mining is still healthy. What does all this mean? Not to worry, I'll explain it all. But first, please like, subscribe, follow, comment. It helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. I greatly appreciate it. And don't forget, this is not financial advice. This is for entertainment purposes only. You can use the links below to do your own research. All right. If you do not watch Monday's ep- if you did not watch Monday's episode, definitely go back and watch it. If you just focus on the good news or the news you want to hear, you are making your own echo chamber and you are blind to reality. Litigation, regulation, and legislation are all real risks for cryptocurrency in all of Web three. Okay, but anyway, I did say that I had some good news for you today, so let's jump right in. And if you're listening on podcast, you can use the links below to follow along. Or you could just listen up and I will let you know what's up. All right. So our first story for today is Starbucks stories and news post titled Starbucks Brewing Revolutionary Web3 Experience for its Starbucks Rewards Members. So it explains their Web3 experience and loyalty reward program. So I'm going to go down here. This is an announcement just happened. This is super big news. As everyone knows, Starbucks is a massive company. And uh, if you don't know, they have the most robust loyalty rewards program on the planet. Okay, so I'm just going to read some stuff from here and pick it out and explain it as I go along. Starbucks today unveiled Starbucks Odyssey, a new experience powered by Web3 technology that will uh, offer Starbucks rewards members and Starbucks partners or employees in the United States the opportunity to earn and purchase digital collectible assets that will unlock access to new benefits and immersive coffee experiences. Starbucks is one of the first companies to integrate non-fungible tokens, or NFTs, with an industry-leading loyalty program at scale, while creating a digital community that will enable new ways for Starbucks to engage with its members and its partners. Starting September 12th, customers and partners can join the waitlist for a chance to be among the first to receive access to the Starbucks IC experience, which will launch later this year. And it goes on to say, for the first time, we are connecting our Starbucks Rewards Loyalty Program members, not just to Starbucks, but each other. All right. And I'm one more paragraph here. Leveraging Web3 technology will allow our members to access experiences and ownership that was not possible before. Starbucks Odyssey will transcend the foundational benefits that our Starbucks Rewards members have come to love and unlock digital physical and experiential benefits that are unlikely are sorry that are uh, are uniquely starbucks continued brewer by integrating into the starbucks rewards ecosystem and grounding the experience and coffee connection and community we are entering the web3 space differently than any other brand while deepening our members connection to starbucks our vision is to create a place where a digital community can come together over coffee engage in immersive experiences and celebrate the heritage and future of starbucks so uh, what am I reading here? This uh, so it's basically saying, "Hey guys, we're getting into the NFTs world. We're getting into Web three, and you're going to be able to have access to new benefits, immersive coffee experiences." Um, let's see, what else do I get from reading all that? Uh, some of the stuff that you'll actually be able to do. It says, yeah, I mean, just the, just what I just said is engage in immersive experiences, um, come together with coffee, building digital community. So if you're a big Starbucks fan, uh, this is probably huge for you. Uh, well, I guess, yeah, I mean, it's huge because you get to get more into the brand you get. And that's one of the benefits of of these NFTs and this digital community stuff. And so Imagine if you're already a regular Starbucks user, you like building up Starbucks rewards points, 
you use them regularly and well this is just another way for you to engage with starbucks so let's let's talk a little bit more about what that looks like so big news they're getting into crypto web3 nfts and they're they're teaming it up with their loyalty rewards program they're not getting rid of their loyalty rewards points those are going to be separate it sounds like these are going to be NFT stamps that give access. All right. So it sounds like this will all be taking place on a platform called Starbucks Odyssey. You'll be able to jo able to log into Starbucks Odyssey with your Starbucks app credentials. However, it remains unclear if you would have to download another app or not. Maybe it'll be like MetaMask where it, when you're in the MetaMask app, you can click on the browser icon and then a browser pops up within a window inside the app. But let's take another look. I found another article where they talk a little bit more about it. Author Web Wright reports for the drum.com. Starbucks unveils Web3 experience, Starbucks Odyssey. The omnipresent brand pushes sustainability by partnering with Polygon for its new digital loyalty program. Yes, Polygon, the Matic token. Polygon is a layer two scaling solution for ethereum it's already running a proof of stake consensus protocol and it's super fast and super cheap and a bunch of people are building on it like i mentioned in stories in the re near recent past mercedes picked them to build uh build out start selling their data points by making nfts on the polygon network that you can just buy and that'll give you access to data points for start uh, startups and other car companies or marketers, etc. And then you also have Disney selected Polygon uh, for their accelerator program to leverage their IP through NFTs by attracting creators into this program, but they're using the Polygon network. So it's important to understand that even if none of these companies use Matic token, if they're building on Polygon, every single transaction has to be settled in the native token, which is matic and the reason that is is because in proof of stake you stake your matic tokens to participate in transactions and liquidity pools etc well not liquidity pools in transactions so you verify the transactions and can and provide a consensus to the blockchain to keep everybody honest well every time that you make a transaction there's a transaction fee, and that's in Matic, whether it's using USDC or not, or just buying NFTs, et cetera. So, yeah. So let, I'm going to keep moving on. Let's see. I got a paragraph here I want to read for you. Starbucks Odyssey is being built in partnership with Polygon, a platform that helps companies build and launch their own decentralized apps or dApps. In an industry known for its huge carbon footprint, Polygon has marketed itself as being devoted to sustainability. The partnership allows Starbucks to promote its new Web3 experience as an extension of its own commitment to reducing its carbon, water, and waste footprints. So I think that's really interesting. You got the proof of stake versus proof of work. Bitcoin is proof of work, and I will not change over to proof of stake. Proof of work means it takes a lot of energy consumption. You got to buy machines specifically for it. You need warehouses. You need to keep them cool. This causes this is causing a lot of um, issues with environmentalist groups and other regulators. This is being used as a major pain point uh, for trying to do something about proof of work or push it away or potentially even ban it, which was Monday's episode. So definitely go and check that out. This is some really important stuff here. You really need to understand the proof of stake versus proof of work. Other consensus protocols, proof of work is really the only one that's high energy con consumer. So anyway, let's keep, keep moving on with Starbucks story. All right. And the next paragraph here, the framework of Starbucks Odyssey, which blends marketing, gamified content, and exclusive access to virtual collectibles, follows a broader trend of food and beverage brands that have recently made attempts to capitalize on Web3. The upcoming Starbucks Web3 experience will be accessible to members of the Starbucks Reward Loyalty Program. Members will be able to earn journey stamp NFTs via a series of games and challenges. They will also be able to purchase limited edition stamp NFTs instead side of a digital marketplace by using their credit card. No crypto wallet will be necessary. 
making the Starbucks Odyssey experience a fun and easy way for members of access to this new technology and claim ownership stake and their loyalty to Starbucks. So I think that that's really interesting. The whole thing about there's no crypto wallet. And uh, so how is that? But there has to be a wallet. So what is Starbucks going to hold it in their own wallet? And they'll just show up as in your account and your ownership of them. Like, for example, if you put money in Coinbase, it goes into one pool. They don't hold your Bitcoin separate for in your name. Like, in, like if you buy stock at a stock with a stockbroker uh, or in, at another exchange, like if you buy those, if you buy stocks, they hold them in your name. They don't put them in a pool of other stocks. And um, because in that case, if the if the business ever goes down, you lose your stock. So like it's but in crypto it all goes into one pool when you have your money on an exchange that's why they say not your coins not your crypto or sorry not your keys not your coins so if you don't actually own if you don't actually hold your crypto in a wallet then it's not really yours it's on someone else's platform and they're doing whatever they do with it and we've seen what some of them do with it and cause a massive crash and lost a bunch of money and i lost a bunch of money so uh, so this is really interesting. I don't know how they're going to pull this off. Um, but again, at the same time, I don't expect Starbucks to be like a concern in that sense. But the question is, can I send my NFTs to my wallet if I want to? I think we'll have there's more to come on that. So because if I can send them to my wallet if I want to, then I should be able to put them on to OpenSea and... Uh, sell them to other people or put them onto another marketplace. So it says it has its own marketplace, but what if, uh, what if, but that's going to be limited to only Starbucks users. Anyway, uh, let's keep moving. Uh, each NFT will come with points, the value of which will vary depending on the rarity of the virtual token. The idea is that customers' points will increase over time, unlocking access to unique benefits and experiences that have never been offered before, including, but not limited to, a virtual espresso martini making class and trips to the brand's coffee farm in Costa Rica. That sounds cool. So the wait list is open. Go get signed up. Uh, what do you think about this? Do you think that this is incredibly bullish? I think that this is exactly what I've been talking about on this show is that Crypto Web 3 will be integrated into our lives in a way where the major m masses who don't understand or don't get it or even don't like it will be using it and not even knowing it. So let me know what you think. Uh, leave a comment below, and I am moving on. Author Will Canny reports for Coindesk, Ethereum blockchain's upgrade may lead to greater institutional adoption of Ether, says Bank of America. Investors who are barred from buying tokens that run on proof-of-work systems may be able to buy Ether after the blockchain switches to proof-of-stake. Now we're back to the proof of stake versus proof of work. So this Ethereum merge has got a bunch of people going. So I just want to read this like first couple sentences. I guess it's actually one long sentence and not even the whole sentence. Okay. While Ethereum switched to proof of stake consensus mechanism from proof of work, a transition known as the merge doesn't address concerns about the blockchain scalabilities or high transaction fees. So what they're saying here is the merge it, depending on who you are, you might be like, oh, sweet, the merge is going to make it cheaper to do transactions on Ethereum. No, it will not. Oh, okay, well, it'll at least be faster. It takes forever. No, it will not. What it will do is decrease the amount of energy usage by 99% per something, per something crazy percent. So that's that. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to jump down here. Mm -hmm. The notable reduction in energy consumption after the merge may allow some institutional investors to purchase Ether for the first time. Those who were barred from buying tokens that run on blockchains that use the proof-of-work consensus mechanism, the report said. So what this is saying is that basically once they go to proof-of-stake, they will be within the ESG guidelines uh, or at least not frowned upon by ESG investors, which I don't, I don't think anybody really understands quite yet because there's no real standardization but at the end of the day proof of work is not okay in terms of the esg world so investors are make, not going to make investments based on this and there are entire countries who will not make investments into proof of work because of the these concerns with the environmental concerns <coughs> or the energy consumption concerns 
So they're saying that Ethereum will, which is the second largest crypto, could actually become maybe more popular than Bitcoin. It doesn't say that, but this is saying a lot of people haven't been buying this because of the energy consumption, and now they will. And it and it kind of keeps going down here. The ability to stake ETH and generate a high quality yield, which is low lower credit liquidity risk. So and as a validator or through a staking service rather than on block box lending borrowing applications may also drive institutional adoption. Okay, so basically how I understand this is that uh because of the new proof of stake. You anybody can join a pool. You can create your own staking pool and uh, participate in governance and uh, and securing the network, etc. So you can process transactions, earn an earn earn a yield while doing it. And they're saying that this is a much higher quality yield than anywhere else in crypto because it's the largest network, has the most utility, most users on it, which means there is a there is a large demand for the token. And now people can buy a basically a piece of the network and secure the network with their tokens. And this is high quality yield because if there are bad actors, if you do something wrong, you can lose your your stash. But if you run the entire pool yourself, like an institution would buy 32 ETH and create their own staking pool and they can earn a high quality yield with a low credit and low liquidity risk. So that's what that says. What do you think about that? I think that's super interesting, super bullish. So I'm probably going to want to buy more Ethereum. Uh, question is, does this mean that I should have more Ethereum than I should have Bitcoin? What do you think? Let me know. Leave a comment below and I am moving on. All right. So author Frank Chaparro reports for The Block. JP Morgan seeking hire to push banking products onto metaverse crypto companies. So... JP Morgan's hiring. I'm just going to read a couple paragraphs here. Wall Street mega bank JP Morgan is looking to expand its reach in the crypto market, seeking a new business development specialist in payment in its payments group to target new clients across Web3, Metaverse, and crypto. There is no industry. Oh, wait, hard, sorry. Per the job description, the new hire would be responsible for lining up new corporate clients for a wide range of payment products, including transactional FX or foreign exchange, liquidity and treasury services, and escrow. There is no industry playbook for these segments. The individual must be comfortable paving a path, creating frameworks, and working with extremely fast moving companies amongst ambiguity. These segments require increased technical knowledge around software that do, no, that do not fit into the traditional training of front office financial professionals. So basically, they need somebody that's more engaged with tech, but can also understand crypto and finance. And uh, they're looking for somebody to really jump on this space. Uh, I think this sounds super exciting. The author continues on to explain how Citigroup and Stanley Wealth Management are also hiring for similar positions. I think this is all very good signs for wider institutional adoption. The more people and institutions we have in crypto and Web3, the better price will perform. Now, there is a warning at the end of this article that I think is really important. It says, to be sure, such, a job, such job ads don't necessarily mean banks are moving into new crypto opportunities at breakneck speed, as previously noted by Bitwise CEO Hunter Horsley. He says that hiring a mid-level person to work on something like this doesn't guarantee a product comes to market. So what do you think? Do you think that this is bullish? Ultimately, I would say personally, yes, but I understand what he's saying. You could hire somebody and then fire somebody, and it's not that big of a deal. So uh, what do you think about this? Let me know. Leave a comment below. Is this bullish or this is BS? This is not as important now. Starbucks and Bank of America's report, you know, maybe. Anyway, all right, moving on. This is our final bullish story of the day. Author Jamie, where is it? Jamie Redman reports for Bitcoin.com. Bitcoin mining firm CleanSpark purchases 10,000 Bitmain miners for $28 million. So basically, the company CleanSpark is a Bitcoin mining company. It's publicly traded under the ticker, uh, let's see, CLSK. For reference, I do own this, so I am just want to make sure, full disclosure. Remember, this is not financial advice. Um now, even though we have seen miners call it quits or start selling their machines, this company was prepared 
for the crypto downturn in winter. So I'm just going to read you a paragraph here. During the tail end of the bull market last year, we strategically focused on building infrastructure instead of following the then industry trend of pre-ordering equipment months in advance. This strategy positioned us to make purchases of landed rigs at a significantly lower price prices, thus reducing the time between deploying capital and hashing, accelerating our return on investment. So they... Um, They've hit some really large numbers in their hash rate. I read up here, um, it rec recorded a production high of 14 Bitcoin per day. I mean, that's some pretty amazing stuff. There. So anyway, um, you know, why is this important? You know, Bitcoin mining is important to secure the network. And what we don't want is a bunch of people to fall off of the network because uh, somebody else in some other country or bad actor could spring up quickly you know, maybe taking over another operation or has an operation of, of Bitcoin rigs that can take over a large percentage of the of the network. So it's important that we have the Bitcoin miners spread all over the world. And it's really important that we have them here in America. That's my opinion. That's what I think. So I think this is really, really awesome to see that we have a major publicly traded company with major hash hash rates and um, just crushing it in the U.S., what do you think about this? Do you think this is important? Do you think this is this is um, bullish news, or do you, you know, what do you think? Uh, Starbucks gets into crypto. Bank of America is saying that now Ethereum, now institutional buyers can can buy it and earn a yield. So that that to me is a signal. Is it to you? What are you going to do with this information? Do you like what I got to say? Do you feel like you know, blah blah blah? We are screwed until we go into a risk off category and then inf inflation stops and, and interest rates hikes stop and cost of gas comes down. I tend to think that way uh, also, uh, but that does not going to stop me from buying. But at the same time, I just don't see a real true bull market in the in the near future. However, stuff like this and the the longer this stuff kind of goes on, the more likely when a big bull market comes, we won't see as big of a crash or we'll just see a much larger liftoff. That's my prediction. Tell me what you think. I'd love to hear from you and have a good day. Hoddle on.